Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Monster Tamer News, the segment on this channel where we go over this week's happenings in the world of monster taming. Now, this week we have two major releases in my opinion, that being Nexomon Extinction, as well as our first look at the Monster Crown content pack. Other than that, we have some new updates across the board regarding various patches, a new Abami, uh, a concept map reveal for Anatons, etc. So, as usual, take a seat, relax, and let's dive right in. So for starters, Nexomon Extinction just launched on all major platforms with Xbox coming in mid-September. In this time, we've also received two patches prior to launch as well as some insight into what the future holds for the game. The pre-launch patches include fixes to overall dynamic scaling, making it more balanced, a change to how Nexomon learn moves, their learn sets will now cycle after level 40, though I think for this a move relearner would probably be better. The idea behind this was just to make it so that you don't lose moves forever if you decide not to learn a certain move. They've also made adjustments to the Cosmic system, which is Nexomon's equivalent to Shinies. Basically, you start with a 1 in 4,000 chance, then mid-game you get a 1 in 3,500 chance, and then end-game you'll have a 1 in 3,000 chance, and these chances can be heightened further based on how many Nexomon you've either seen or owned. It increases the chances by 1 for every seen Nexomon and 2 for every owned Nexomon. So, for example, for all intents and purposes, let's say you have seen 50 Nexomon and owned 0, just for simplicity's sake, the chances would decrease from 1 in 3000 to 1 in 2950. They've also added a hidden harmony stat that caps out at 100. Every time you win a battle it goes up by 1 and when it faints it goes down by 5. At max however it will boost XP by 35% making it very advantageous to avoid letting your Nexomon get knocked out. There's actually a ton more that went into the two pre-release updates so if that does interest you definitely feel free to check it out. I'll leave the uh, Nexomon Extinction Steam page in the description. Regarding the future we actually got an update via their Steam page going over over what to expect with regards to future updates and patches. The first patch is going to include a cosmic indicator, more difficulty adjustments, and a Spanish translation, whilst the second update is going to include free avatars as well as a myriad of various suggestion based changes. I know for example the Nexomon Twitter account saw my review of the game and my suggestion about having a rest option. They replied to the video saying that they were looking into adding one. So I could see the updates being stuff like that. Outside of specific updates at the top, which I'm assuming means it's like a long-term future thing, uh, it says it's going to include a free major content update and a New Game Plus and Hardcore Difficulty mode. This to me is really exciting as New Game Plus opens the door to way more replayability if the subsequent playthroughs yield better rewards and let you keep your team. I do also hope that they go the Dark Souls route where you can keep playing like New Game Plus 1, New Game Plus 2, New Game Plus 3, and they just keep getting harder and harder with perhaps it capping out at like New Game Plus 7 like they do in Dark Souls. With regards to the content update, I'm assuming it could be some sort of new area, perhaps new Nexomon to capture, I'm not too sure, but I wouldn't be against future expansions that are paid DLC as well, because when it comes to paid DLC and stuff like that, I actually really do enjoy expansions as long as the base game feels full, which Nexomon does. I mean, who knows, if the game does do really well with regards to even its initial sales, they've said they were looking into multiplayer, and furthermore, who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to get Nexomon 3, that'd be pretty cool. Monster Crown just released its first content update, which I'm super excited for, and it includes the Move Relearner and Deleter, Net Eggs, which allow you to breed with a random gene from other players around the world, and Alternate Genes, which will switch the inheritance for attack, magic, appearance, type, and palette to the secondary monster instead of the primary monster. Expect a video checking out the new update and sort of playing around with it soon. In Kindred Fates news, the devs over at Skymill Studios just released their bi-weekly newsletter which showcased a portion of the Ruins Battleground as well as the day-night cycle. We've also got confirmation that UI design is underway as well as the game's configuration screens. Also, Kindred Fates' account system is up, so if you did back, make sure to set up an account on the Skymill website. The Combat Alpha is set to release November at the latest, and I'm super hyped to say the least. The Anatons dev just revealed a concept for the Anatons in-game map, which shows eight different biomes. The map indicates the order in which they will be worked on, going from one to eight. The first biome seems to be a plains of sorts, likely home to nature Anatons, and perhaps wind types, as they'll have room to fly around in such a biome. The second is clearly a tropical biome, likely home to many water types. The third, a mountainous region, where we'll likely see various rock and fire types due to the volcano. The fourth is a snowy region that will obviously host ice types. 
The fifth is a swamp, so perhaps it's home to toxic types. The sixth is a desert, so this could be home to more rock types, uh, perhaps nature types in the form of like cactuses and whatnot, and also fire types because deserts tend to be very hot. The seventh seems to be an area that will likely hold crystal types given the small crystal icons on the map. And the eighth is very interesting, featuring bamboo and cherry blossom trees seemingly being based off Japan. We don't really see a spot that screams a specific typing, but electricity is the last one, so perhaps this could be home to the electric types, but only time will tell. We've also had various in-game screenshots revealed, and the areas look absolutely beautiful to say the least. Monster Sanctuary is being featured at Gamescom 2020, and as a result, they also featured an Ask Me Anything on the Reddit page, which went for 24 hours. In it, people ask questions about New Game Plus and other game modes, which are in fact planned for post-game launch, uh, a potential for a contest design, etc. Definitely check it out. From what I've played so far, Monster Sanctuary is an awesome game, and I am excited to get our next part of our playthrough out, hopefully this Thursday. We've got some more Serolum Ultimate patches out this week for the Alpha, bringing us to version 0.2.2. Within the three updates we've received, we've gotten the addition of the Arena, Serolopoly, various additions to the decoration system and codex, as well as fixes to uh, various bugs and quality of life improvements and whatnot. The patch notes regarding version 0.2.0 specifically is quite long, but Zach did recommend that people at least skim through it as there are some noteworthy additions to the game. I also hope to get more videos out on the alpha soon because Serolum's a really solid game. Crema, aka the Temtem devs, just pushed out a patch that adds Spanish, French, German, Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean translations for the Kisiwa update, as well as another PvP focused patch fixing various bugs with the battle system. Links to the patch notes in the description. In Abomination news, Carl over at Orange Pylon just revealed a new Abani named Volshrike, which is a plant wind-type vulture that loves to hunt. It and its currently unrevealed pre-evolution learn how to hunt by grabbing their prey, flying over sharp objects, and just dropping them. I mean, it's a little bit dark. Uh, just another example of how Abami's cutesy appearances are contrasted in a really great way by the gruesome nature of the game. It makes for quite the shock when stuff like that happens or when you hear that somebody just died or something like that. Carl's also made adjustments to the in-game UI. If you've noticed, it looks a lot cleaner now. I really like it. Over to Patch Quest, the private beta has been updated to version 2.0, which includes the first boss battle, some new monsters to ride, and some changes to the game's controls. For testers out there, make sure to check out the announcement page on the Patch Quest Discord. Adore has also updated to version 0.4.4, which includes the previously teased custom controls, a minimap rework, and a new classification of attack called Weak Attack, which does not stagger enemies, but will continue to stagger already staggered enemies. They've also added 16 new synergies to the game and have teased that the next update will contain tons of new monsters with innovative mechanics. And of course, last but not least, the devs over at Ploxmons are celebrating two years since the initial development of the game. Michael just posted a little comparison of what the game's cards looked like in 2018, 2019, and now 2020. I just wanted to say congratulations to them, and I look forward to playing it and probably getting slaughtered in the future. So yeah, guys, that was basically the gist of what's going on this week. I just wanted to take the time real quick to say thank you to everyone for 3,000 subscribers, and I look forward to continuing to grow alongside this community. It's quite honestly been an amazing experience to see people come to my channel for, let's say, one specific title and have their horizons widened by all of the awesome games coming out. I can't count how many times I've had people tell me, hey, you know, I came for this specific game, but now I've seen this game, now I've seen that game, now I've seen this game. It makes me happy not only to see fans finding uh, sort of new passions beyond a singular title, but also the devs getting the word out and getting a fan base that they honestly deserve. I just wanted to say thanks again, guys. Y'all mean the friggin' world to me. And on that note, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd. Check out our subscriber Discord. All links in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.